welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson, an apostle of the Lord who teaches in the authority of Jesus Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit, imparting wisdom and knowledge for good success through Kingdom Living. Brought to you in part by Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center, 9900 Brockington Road in Sherwood, Arkansas. And now, Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson. God bless you today. I'm Dr. Brenda Jefferson and welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living. I want to say to you, I want to minister to a certain group of people today. While it is a day that we're celebrating love, it is possible that everybody is not in a celebratory mood. Glory to God. Maybe you have not gotten the flowers yet. Maybe you are not getting candy. Maybe you will not be taken out to dinner. Just maybe you will be spending this time alone. But I want to let you know that just because you're alone does not mean that you have to be lonely. And I want to release an anointing today to let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Father loves you and that the Father loves you unconditionally. I also want to say to you that many times what we're looking for, only God can provide. So many times you've heard the cliche that we're looking for love in all the wrong places. I want to submit to you today, glory to God, that when we experience the love of the Father, glory to God, what others do to us really does not matter to the degree that we have given it in times past. I want to say to you today that the Father is love. As a matter of fact, 1 John 4 and 8 says that God is love. Not that God just gives love or that he shows love, but the Bible says that the very essence of who God is, is love. And I want to introduce you to someone today who loves you unconditionally. That it does not matter what you've done. It does not matter the places you've been. I want to say to you today that God loves you. And when God loves you and you're in engulfed with that love, glory to God. It makes everything all right. I want to read you before I make some declaration and some decrees. I want to read to you out of the scripture, according to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, where it talks about love. And when I talk about love, I'm not talking about filio. I'm not talking about eros, but I am talking about agape love, the kind of love that the father uh, bestows or lavishes upon his children. And I share with our congregation a lot, glory to God, that when I come into, when I came into the kingdom of God, that it was not challenging for me to receive the father's love because I was raised by a father who loved his children very much, who was willing to lay down his life for his children, glory to God, who felt that once his children entered the scene, glory to God, then his needs and his desires became second nature and he was there to provide for us, glory to God. So when I came into the kingdom of God, when I begin to hear of a father's love, it was not difficult for me to embrace this love. Maybe you are watching by TV, listening by internet, or even by radio, glory to God, and you're saying that you never experienced the father's love. Well, that's what I've come to talk about today is the father's love, the love that's unconditional, the love that it does not matter, glory to God, what you've been through, what you've been, fa what you've been faced with, the the number of relationships that you've been in and out of, how do I know so much about the love of God? I'm talking about Abba Father, because when I read the scriptures and when the Holy Ghost illuminates his word to me, I am confident, glory to God, that he loves us and he loves us unconditionally. When we study even the tabernacle, glory to God, we are familiar with the love of the Father. The Bible says that when God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle, you know the story, there were three parts to the tabernacle. It was the outer court, it was the uh, holy place, and it was the holy of holies. 
But what's more than that, the Bible says, while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. But even before Christ died, the Word of God says in John, St. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he was willing to give at that time his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would receive eternal life. So I've come to tell you today that God loves you, that you might be alone, glory to God. You might be lonely, but you're not alone, glory to God. So I want to read to you 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And as I read, glory to God, I've already prayed before I start reading that God would release his love, that he would let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are loved by Almighty God, that you are loved by the Father, and there is no love like the love of a father. Not only will we read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, but we're going to also go to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. And you know that famous passage of Scripture regarding the prodigal son. So go with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and let's begin reading. The Word of the Lord says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. But love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity, another word for love, never fail it. But whether there be prophecies, the word says they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. And then he sticks something in there. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I bestow even as I know, even as also I am known. And now abided faith hope, charity, these three. But the Bible says the greatest of these is charity or love. People of God, so many times as we begin to search for love in all the wrong places, we become disappointed. We experience rejection. We experience shame. But I've come to declare and decree today that this is your coming out party, that this is a day of celebration. No, maybe you might not get the candy. You might not get the roses. You might not even get an invitation to go out to dinner. But I want to let you know that today, like no other day, you're going to experience the love of the Father. And when you begin to experience the love of the Father, it is something about the joy of the Lord that begins to flood your soul. Now, I want to go uh, to Luke, the 15th chapter, glory to God, and I want to begin reading regarding the prodigal son. You're very familiar, glory to God, with that passage of Scripture. And we understand, glory to God, that the Word of God says a father had two sons. And the younger son said, Father, I am ready to take that, that belongs to me, that is my inheritance, and I want to leave 
where I am. Now, I want you to understand this because as we talk about a father's love, glory to God, we're talking about unconditional love. We're talking about the love that can bring you up out of the muck and the miry. Glory to God. Remember the word of the Lord says that love covers a multitude of fault. Not only that, when we begin to read, let me go ahead and read the scripture because I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The word of the Lord says in Luke 15 and 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. People of God, I want us to understand today that the Father loves us unconditionally. I don't think I can say that enough, but every time I say it, I want the anointing of God to take the words and release them into the atmosphere to allow those that are feeling rejected right now, those that are experiencing shame for whatever reason, those that are feeling unloved, that you are not unloved. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Father loves you and the Father loves you unconditionally. Glory to God. And when we experience the Father's love, there's a comfort that comes with that love. So when we look at Luke, the 15th chapter, and we begin to talk about what we have uh, termed it, the prodigal son, the Bible says that he goes to his father and, his fa and he asks his father for the portion of goods or inheritance that befalls him. And the Bible says that the father gives it to him. Now, this is something that you have to understand about a father's love. The father does not always agree with what he do, but it, with, with what we do. But the one thing that we can count on is that he loves us the same. The word of the Lord says the young son comes, Daddy, I want what's rightfully mine, and I'm getting ready to get up out of here. I'm tired of the rules. I'm tired of the regulations. Glory to God. I want to go and experience life for myself. How many of you can identify with that? Glory to God. That you've had a good thing. Glory to God. Perhaps you had parents that love you. Glory to God. And they love you very much. And that was not good enough for you because somebody told you that the grass was greener on the other side. So here this boy is coming to his father who has loved him all of his life, who has made provisions for him, who has been his protector, his provider, glory to God. And he's saying, give me what's rightfully mine. And the father loving the son enough to say, listen, I understand the word. And the word says to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the father had to believe that even though that he was going to give the son the goods that befall him, the father had to know that I put something in my son, glory to God, that when he gets out there and he gets uh, to feeling like he is unloved, that he's ashamed, glory to God, that he can always come back home. And so the word of the Lord lets us know that this young boy, he goes out and he spends all of his money on righteous living, glory to God. And then something happens. A famine comes to the land. And we know that the famine simply means lack or want. And the Bible says that this son who had had everything, glory to God, began to be in want. And he began to look for a job. Isn't it amazing that as long as we have what we think we have, it appears that we have friends, people around us. But when it comes to those down times, glory to God, seems like we can call a friend and they're so thankful for caller ID that they will make a decision whether or not they want to talk to you. But I want to let you know today, glory to God, that you can call upon the Father at any time, glory to God, and he will answer and come and see about you. The word of the Lord goes on to tell us that he would have began to work with the swine. 
And if you understand anything about Jewish culture, that's not something that they are familiar with, glory to God. But the Word of God says, and this is what I like, the Bible says that while he was there, he came to himself. And I believe that he came to his higher self, glory to God. We've got to understand that there is a lower self and then there's a higher self. There's a self that can tap into the realm of the supernatural, glory to God, and bring us back to our original original self, to know that, listen, the son began to talk to himself, and sometimes, glory to God, you've got to begin to speak life to your own self, glory to God. You can't wait for somebody else to pat you on the back, to celebrate you, to throw a party. People of God, you've got to go and throw your own party, glory to God. Make your own birthday cake, put candles on it, declare and decree that this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Here is this son, glory to God, and he he would desire to be there. But the word of the Lord says that he came to himself. Let me tell you something. When you're hungry, you'll do a lot of things. When you're desperate, you'll do a lot of things. When you feel alone and lonely, you will do a lot of things. But I want to let you know that there is something on the inside of you, and that's what I've come to speak to today, that greater one that lives on the inside of you. I've come to tell you today that where you are is not your destination, that you can come up out of that circumstance. You can come up out of that situation. And and what draws you out of it? When nothing else would help, love lifted me. I'm talking about the agape love. I'm talking about the love of the Father. Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International invites you to partner with us to empower all of God's people for kingdom living. Your investment will help ensure that this powerful word blesses hearts and changes lives throughout the nation and around the globe. For your investment of any amount, we'll send you the Apostle's powerful message, Finishing Well, on CD to say thank you for your support. Send your best gift today to Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International, P.O. Box 6778, Sherwood, Arkansas, 72124, or visit our website at www.apostlebj.com. And the word of the Lord says in Romans 5 and 5, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Perhaps you're asking the question, how can I experience the love of the Father? Well, it is going to be very important, glory to God, that not only do you experience the love of the Father, and not only do you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, but you're going to need to receive the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit on the inside of us that will begin to illuminate the love of the Father to us. Well, then the next question might be, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? I'm so glad you asked because the Word of the Lord said it's simple. All you have to do is to ask. So right here, right now, I want to lead you to that place. The Bible says, how is it that men can give good gifts into their children and men not, and the whole, and the Father not give good gifts or give the Holy Spirit, listen to me, to those who ask. Let me say that again. The scripture says, how is it that men can give good gifts to their children and our Father not give us the Holy Spirit if we ask Him. It's that simple. And I want to lead you there, right where you are. Just simply say, Father, I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I want the Holy Spirit to come into my life. I want it to illuminate the Father's love to me. It is that simple. So here this son is. The Bible said he came to himself, and he began to talk to himself, and he began to say, how many hired servants do my father have, and they have enough bread and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Listen to what he said. He said, I will arise, I will get up, 
and I will go to my father. I had a sister, glory to God, who struggled with crack cocaine, glory to God. I had a brother that spent five years in prison, glory to God. I had a brother that divorced his wife, married somebody else, remarried. I'm telling you, we have a collage of things that happen in our family. But one thing my daddy said to us, you can never go so low that I will not come to see about you. And I say to you today that if a natural father can say that, how much more than our heavenly father? When we were so deep in sin when nothing else could help. Glory to God. The Bible said God so loved us that he sent his son, and then his son so loved us that he gave his life. People of God, here this young man is saying, I will arise and go to my father, and I'll say, I've sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against thee. If you would just make me as one of the hired servants, daddy, you don't have to do anything special. Let me just come and work in the field. Let me be the housekeeper, glory to God. Whatever it is that you need somebody to do, father, I'm willing to do that. But oh, when I begin to talk about the love of the father, glory to God, I can imagine this father. Will you allow me to use my spiritual imagination that every day this father walked to the corner of the porch, glory to God, saying that I know one day that he's coming home. And then he would go back and he would sit in his recliner and he would begin to talk to God. And I believe that he said something like this, Father, would you allow him to tap into a ram, glory to God, to let him know that I'm not angry with him, that at any moment that he is ready to come home, that I am ready to receive him. And then the father would go day after day, day after day, looking for his son. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about the son, because you've got to make a decision today that you're going to receive the law of receiving. You're going to receive the love from the Father. What did I say at the beginning? Many times we're looking for love in all the wrong places. So here this son is who have made a decision to come home. Can you imagine what that son must have encountered? Glory to God. Remember when he left out, he left out full. And he's much like glory to God, Naomi. I said, I left out full. I left with my husband. I left with my sons. And now I'm coming back empty. Glory to God. I'm quite sure he left looking good. Glory to God. He had his luggage. Glory to God. And he had a sack of money. But he encountered a bad circumstance and a bad situation. Now he is on his way back home. Can you imagine? The people that see him coming also saw him when he was leaving, and he was not in the same condition. Maybe he had no shoes on. Maybe his clothes were raggedy, glory to God. Maybe there was a downcast look on his face, but he said, I'm going home anyway. Can you imagine the people on the sideline pointing, saying, wasn't he the little boy? Wasn't uh, she the little girl that was raised by somebody that loved her, that protected her, had everything, glory to God, and they made a choice to leave home? Can can you imagine what that son must have encountered on his way home? But the thing that I like about this story, glory to God, nothing he heard, nothing people said could deter him because he said what? I'm going home. Why? Because it was the father's love that was drawing him, that was saying to him in the spirit when he connected with his higher self, come on home, son. It's all right. It's all right. One day, and I'm not sure how long the journey took. But one day, the word of the Lord says that the father goes, what I believe was his usual place, and he looks for the son. And the Bible says that he sees the son afar off. And the son is there. And remember what he made up and what he said that he was going to say when he got to the father. But when you experience the father's love, if you would look at that passage of scripture very clearly, glory to God, and very closely, you will not see where the father allowed him to tell him what he had been through. It was not important to the father, glory to God, the things that the son had been through. The thing that was important to the father was my son that was lost is now back at home again. And glory to God. The Bible says that when he saw him a far way off, listen, the father did not wait for the son to make it to the house. The Bible says he ran out to meet him, glory to God. And I want to let you know today that God is running to meet you wherever you are, that you cannot go so low, that you cannot do anything so bad. Even the hurt, the shame, the loneliness you're feeling right now, God says, what can separate us from the love? of God. 
So the Bible says that the father runs and he hugs him and he kisses him, glory to God. Wraps his arm around his neck, glory to God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost because I know that God has ordained, that God has scheduled for you to be watching this telecast right now. For God to begin to express to you how much he loves you and how much he cares for you and how what you're looking for sometimes in other people can only be found in God. So this father is saying now, I can see the son getting ready to open his mouth to say, Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. And the father is saying, no, bring me a robe, the best robe. Bring me a ring, glory to God. Not only that, bring me some sandals, glory to God. He said, I am getting ready to crown you, glory to God, with my love, glory to God. I want you to know that I miss you, that I love you, that I was waiting for you to come back. Because one thing that you have to understand about a father's love, the father could have began to go out and look for him. But what he had to understand was that the same rules, perhaps the same regulation or the same requirements, they are still in place. Glory to God. So you have to make a decision to come home. What did the father say? Bring me the best robe. Draped it on him. He said, bring me a ring. Let me put it on his finger, establishing covenant. Let me put sandals on his feet. Let him know that his walk is totally different. But not only that, I want you to kill a fatted calf because we are getting ready to have a party. People of God, when you experience the love of the Father, it's nothing for you to do but throw a party. Glory to God. And I want to admonish you today to throw a party. Don't wait for somebody else to celebrate you. Glory to God. The Father has already celebrated you. He has given you your value. He is the one who will give you your worth. Glory to God. So I admonish you. Just as his Father was standing there, with outstretched arms, that the Father, Abba Father, our Father, is standing today waiting to release, to lavish his love upon us. Do you want it today? Let me take this opportunity to begin to declare and decree that no more woe is me. This is not the time to throw in the towel. I declare and decree, glory to God, that failure is not an option, that today's sadness is not an option. We've got to take on the love that Jesus Christ did. And he said, because of the joy that was be set before me, I endured some things. So I want to declare and decree today that you're the head and not the tail, that you're above only and not beneath, that you're the lender and not the borrower, that you're blessed going out, glory to God, and you're blessed coming in. Not only that, glory to to God, that your baskets are for everything that you need, glory to God. The Father today is willing to provide. So I declare and I decree, just as God told the Israelites in Exodus, the 12th chapter, that this is the beginning of your new year. And I say to you, yes, I know that it is February the 14th, but see, God can change anything that he wants to. And he is saying to you today that today is a new year, the beginning of a new year in your life. Why? Because you've come to the knowledge that the Father loves you and he loves you unconditionally. Thank you for watching Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson. Pastor of Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center in Sherwood, Arkansas. You're invited to join us for our Sunday celebration each Sunday morning at 1015, and our Tuesday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. each week. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer.